So first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the staff team for this opportunity. And um, yeah, let's talk about this uh, topic that I like a lot. And uh, I was watching yesterday some talks here, you know, uh, the people talk about, you know, the passwords, secrets and something like this. And today my idea during this morning is to share more. I will divide this presentation in two parts. Actually, the first part is more, let's say, bullshit part. It's a theoric part. I, I know that you don't like this, but it's necessary, you know. And the second part is more, you know, the technical part and practical is more sexy part. I know that is. Okay, let me introduce myself again. So I'm working now creating this uh, business unit. I'm director of the Thread Research and advocate at Senha Segura. Senha Segura is kind of different name because it's a Brazilian name. And by the way, I'm Brazilian, but I live in Portugal. And uh, I hope in the next few months to move into live here in US. And but Senha Segura is it means password safe, you know, so makes sense with the <laughs> with the, the track here. But they are this company is responsible for provide some identity solution and stuff like that. But my idea here is not to talk about this company, it's to talk about some uh, research. Okay. And I'm very active in different communities, as you can see here. So, you know, I'm speaking Red Team Village, Adversary Village, Cloud Village, and I'm Sneak Ambassador, the open source part, of course, not the enterprise. <laughs> and I'm one of the advocates of the hack is not a crime. S someone or here heard about the hack is not a crime or one person. So that's uh, the idea behind of this project is to spread the message about the hacking. Because when you talk about, you know, the, the hacking is not really a bad guy or a threat actor. Because you, when you see them on TV, newspaper, you see something related to a bad guy. But the hacker is when you're using your creative mind, you discover something and you help some companies. You know, that's the idea behind of this concept. That's the idea. And I'm instructor, writer, and review this, those, three, those three magazines in Europe. So if you'd like to share some, you know, article, probably you will review this. And that's me. Good picture for my mother. Okay, anyway. So that's the idea to create the Identity Threat Labs. So to discover a new, uh, how the, the attackers are using identity to explore vulnerability, you know, to investigate how they're using token secrets, how the malware works, and how they are using this secrets to explore vulnerabilities. If you think about the, for example, the attacks that happened for the last few years, you cannot see nothing about the zero day. Usually it's about the third party that someone explored or, you know, library in the code or even misconfiguration, you know? So that's the idea to establish this idea to understand how to create this uh, a research center. So if you have some, you know, content about that, so I would like to talk with you, understand more how you do your research and learn with you about that, okay? So nice, let's talk about our main topic. If you are, you know, uh, an expert, if you are a principal, sorry, but I need to put every people on the same page. So I will talk about something base and after that we go for some terms. What is thread? Simple like this is not my definition, according to ISO, is a potential incident that cause something in your organization or system. So we need to understand about the threads, okay? So it's a software attack, theft of intellectual, uh, intellectual property, or even identity theft. So we are talking about, you know, passwords, secrets, token, and identity, or human identity. So we need to understand those differences, okay? But when you talk about the identity theft, is a kind of threat, sabotage, and information extortion like a ransomware. It's a kind of threat. So this is one term. Very simple, probably you already heard about that. It's your first time here, so this is, means threat, okay? The other term is high value target. This is interesting because probably if you more um, if you have more experience in the cybersecurity field, you know how these terms works when you talk about the domain controller. Usually when you think about the high value target in this scenario, you understand that the, uh, the, the domain controller is the high value target. But what is exactly high value target? It's coming to the military terminology when you know to need to define when specifically person, research that enemy re commanders requires to complete a specific mission. Okay, so when you think about the organizations, so we need to think who is the person that can be my, my high value target. But when you talk about the cloud, remember the title of this conversation is cloud, remember? So it's not ex exactly one single identity, but you have a many possibilities in the cloud. So if this identity was exposed, what is the impact? So think about that. Okay. So when you talk about the high value targets in the in the uh, in our field, we can think it maybe is a, a G Suite or mobile, uh, board member or executive. But on the other hand, if you see here, it's a kind of uh, people that has elevated privilege. 
So if you think about the cloud, so if you divide this room in two parts here, so we have here one group and this another run, another side, another group. So here we have many identities, many permissions, many rules, and maybe each person here is inside of the group permission, right? And they can be uh, associated to another group. They have a kind of relationship. This is important to understand, okay? So that's thing. When you talk about the cloud, we have one single identity. This identity has a permissions. Above this, you have a group, you have a rule, and you have uh, many people, you know, connected between each identity. So in this case, so when you talk about the cloud, everyone can be a high value target. Why? Because the identity access management, the permissions in the cloud can give the access and specifically resource in the cloud. I will explain more. So this another term, attack vector, attack path. So attack vector ba basically is the method using for the cyber attackers or attackers or a threat actors, not a hacker, okay? So that using to compromise specifically systems, okay? So it's very common to talk about malware, you know, answer. Phishing is a kind of, you know, strategy that you're using. So if you think about cyber key chain, but when you talk about the human errors, you can see weak, Credentials, we talk about passwords and tokens and whatever. Poor encryption, MD5, SHA-1, and misconfiguration. That's the main point here in our conversation today, okay? And of course, all those things allow people to access sensitive, sensitive data in the cloud. Another term is attack path. Basically, it's the graph, graph mode. Remember, the title is the way, the visualization that attack is using in this specific environment. So this is a very interesting picture from OASP, explain in this case more security risk, but you can see here, for example, the threat agent, the attack vector, you can use it, for example, misconfiguration, or even if you explore some vulnerability like in any specific application, when this thing happen is because, for example, the application is vulnerable or they have some file upload vulnerability or some, you know, attack path, um, traversal path, directal path, or anything like this. You can use it for a command injection, whatever vulnerability, but you gain the access usually in the web you know, user. You need to escalate privilege in the cloud. So you, when you explore some weakness, when you gain the access, you have the control of this kind of system. You can, you know, impact a specifically function, you gain the access uh, or you can impact the business in this organization, okay? Now, okay, sorry, this is the bullshit part, I know, but now we talk about more sexy part, okay? So who works with AWS here in this room? Okay, I don't need to talk more, sorry. No, sorry, I'm joking. So, but that's the point here. So if you don't work with AWS, or if you work, for example, GCP, Azure, or even OCI, or, or other, another cloud provider, the concept behind of these ideas is quite the same. Of course, when you talk about, for example, Azure, they have a subscription, it's quite different. GCP, you, you need to understand if you're using, for example, GCP Workspace, or Google Workspace, or something like this. But for example, OCI is quite similar to AWS uh, and other cloud providers is a good opportunity to make the research with me, okay? So nice, just to put in every people in the same page. So again, AWS AMs basically is the services responsible for managing the identity in the cloud, uh, talking, talk about the AWS specific. So they will centralize the, the different permissions and how you can provide the access in this research. Who is, can, you know, who uh, is, responsible for authenticating this in this case, or he uh, or who is authorized to go inside of this service. Remember, when you talk about the cloud, it's different about the virtualization, okay? So I like to explain this because in the past we have a virtualization, so when you talk about the cloud, we have a services connected, like a puzzle. So for this puzzle works in the right way, you need to have this, we need to configure this basically, the IAM. So the IAM is, will be responsible for give the access or not the access, or not the access, okay? So when you enable some EC2 instance, for example, you need to attach some storage behind of this EC2 to works. It's different when you configure some VM or because of, or, or virtual machine, let's say. Uh, when you configure some, for example, virtual machine, you just set, you know, CPU, memory, and disk. But when you configure some cloud, we need to connect to those uh, resources, those, those services. And for those service works, you need to configure this fucking service. I don't know, I, I cannot use in fucking, it's not polite, right? Okay, sorry. I can use here and besides. I can use? 
Thank you, sir. I'm relaxed now. Good, 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 good. Okay, so this is the version, this is the some uh, how the AWS works when you talk about permissions, okay? How do you create in specifically policy? Because it's when you if you work with the cloud, mainly AWS, you're a security guy, you need to configure something. You should, you should, you actually, we should look in from the AWS web architecture, right? Who knows this web architecture framework? Man, it's so bad. Because when I ask who works with AWS, I think 93% of this room, you know, hands up. When I ask about the AWS web architecture, I just see three people. So we have a problem here. Because web architecture is a kind of guidance to implement security stuffs in the cloud, focusing in AWS. So if you don't know, we have a problem here in Houston. You know, <laughs> that's the big problem. That's the key. Because here is how the permission works. Okay, we have a kind of statement, you know, is a kind of part of the information that you can put inside of this element. This is the st statement of the permission in AWS. So for this attack happen, basically you need to look in from this effective, it means allow or deny, and the action is a bunch of list of action that this policy that you create allow or deny, okay? Because again, it's, this is the simple, if you see here, this is a simple EAM read-only access. This, is, this permission is default, is standard from AWS. As you can see, when you configure something in AWS, you just go to the permission and you have a possibility to using those standard you know, policies like administrator access, uh, EIM read-only access, you know, whatever, you know, bucket GC3, permissions, whatever. You have many different standard permissions from the AWS. But the key is here. Effect is allow, take a look at this action. It just list and get those informations about the AM. So in the research, if you see here, the asterisk is safe. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point because I should when you enable this, usually the AWS give you some warning because you should, you know, uh, specify the the RAN, the AWS research name responsible for receive this permission. So that's the key. But for the security or for the management, it's more easy to put why the asterisk. It's enough. Okay, but take a look at this. So my, I have a question to you. This is just read really only access. So this permission is safe or not? Why not? I cannot write no, nothing. Other. So, what do you think? Good. I don't understand many explanations because I cannot hear, but I agree with, both, with everyone. Probably those three people explain the same thing. We can read because you can list, you know, let's say PII information, right? So you can list users, you can list groups, you can list policies. So for the attacker perspective, if they gain the access, because basically the only information the attacker needs to have in this case is one secret and one key. And after that, they can connect it to the AWS console, the CLI in this case, console uh, command line interface. They can connect in this account because this is the two main requirements. The others you can just click and enter because it's default, okay? Like a region and time zone and another don't remember. But the only information to go inside of the AWS is secret and key, remember that, okay? So after that, if you have this permission, you can list everything. It's maybe not too dangerous because you cannot write in the cloud, but for the you know for the compliance or stuff like that is 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 complicated because you can list policy because you can do the enumeration, okay, in the cloud. That's the key. Just but if you see, we just can see here only two actions. Remember that. Okay. So let's think about some this is kind of challenge that you have in our days. Developer team access many applications, DevOps team access many systems, database team, cloud teams. Oof. This guy li like to use in the uh, you know cloud. I don't know why, but they like they like to have a permission. I don't know why, but they like. Okay, 
So in the past, we have a admin guy, but nowadays everyone access the cloud. Even the market team, no, one's, no one here works with market, right? <laughs> it's good, you know, if someone works with marketing, sorry. But now, actually, they need to use it sometimes because they need to create some, you know, advertisement, it's fucking advertisement. Okay, and they request the developer to create a specifically landing page, and they request for the developer creating this, the developer do what? They create a Lambda service, okay? They run the code and after the advertisement campaign, they delete the code, everything is safe. But now, because the user to work this, they should be, you know, a service account user, it's continue to be there because they, they don't delete the user. They just delete the code because, you know, the user when they create an AEM, they don't need to pay for it. That's the key. Yeah, so because of that, so C-level access the cloud. So I don't want to ask if there are some C-level here because it can be. I like everyone, by the way. Okay, so we have uh, remote workers. Uh, this is now, nowadays it's quite, you know, hybrid, but some companies continue to be, you know, remote workers and inside their fucking threads, okay, they, you know, gain the access inside of the environment. And that's an interesting point when you talk about inside their thread. Because sometimes some people, you know, imagine that the insider is the guy that works in the darkness, you know. But no, it's someone that's enabled a specifically misconfiguration. Pay attention to that. Ah, oh, yes, the marketing guy. That's it. It's the movie guy. Exactly. It's a, no one marketing here, right? Just the level, I know. Okay. So that's the key. Is the marketing guy. So the move. But nowadays they're using some. They don't disable all policies. They just set some misconfiguration, you know, oh, it's a kind of error here. That's the inside the thread works. And what is the impact if someone is attacked? Just think about that. Okay, let's talk about the other sex part. So to happen this, to do this attack, actually, we need to, again, have the access key and the secret or the key and secret to connect. Remember when I mentioned it? So let's suppose that I gain the access and this is specifically AWS console. So I try to use in this list user, as I asked you before, remember? So just uh, this guy don't have a, for example, read only access because the access denied. So good point for, you know, for the security team. I try to list some policy and access deny. And I try list groups, deny. Okay, the security team works good here in this case for the specifically secret and token that I had. So let's suppose now, if I have new, or I would like to show you the impact about one single action. So I create here, I will create a specifically policy and take a look at this. I just put into a specifically policy here, and not policy, two actions. If you see here, one is inside of this permission management. So AWS basically has a three groups. One is write, another read, and another is permission management. And inside of each group, we have a bunch of actions. So when you enable some standard permissions in the cloud, remember standard policy in the AWS, there are a bunch of actions inside of this policy. So because of that, it's important to look inside of each action. Why, Philip? Because I've explained now what is the impact, okay? So I put in asterisk here, take a look at the color, you know? This color is quite, you know, I don't know, orange, yellow, I don't know, whatever, but it's a warning, okay? Okay, take a look at this, I call attack module, and I using the custom manager, it means I create my own policy, okay? And if you see here, actually I just enable one single action, create policy version, you see? Then resource, I create for all policy here, the asterisk. It's a, this is a kind of, you know, remember the statement that I mentioned it? So what is the effect allow in the action create policy version? So let's see the impact. Uh, by the way, I, I wrote an article and I'm publishing in, the, in Pentest Magazine. I think he, uh, this article is in my, my uh, LinkedIn as well. So I explained these attacks in details, but to gain this information, I just type in the Google how I can create the full access in AWS using CLI. And they suggest them in this code. If I am, you know, newbie, so I just copy and paste this code. If you see here, the actions is AIM, 
So asterisk, so I can access everything. And let's suppose that I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I don't have any knowledge man, about the cloud. So they suggest me some organization stuff here. So if you don't know, organization is, is the main account, not main account, but when sometimes the company has an organization and behind of this organization, they, ha they can have more than 50, 100 accounts. If the company is too large, usually they use a different account in, you know, um, uh, behind of this specific organization. So remember, I just type in on Google and ask how I can access, how I can have the full access in AWS. And they suggest me. here. But on the other hand, if I don't know how I can type in CLI, you can ask it to Google how I can create a policy version. And they suggest you the AWS code, or well, actually the AWS command. So in the article, I put how I discovered this information. Basically, if you see AWS AAM, the service, create policy version, because I will create a new policy. I need to set here the REN, the, attack, the POC attack module, and I can set the policy document, as you can see here. And this is the document, attacker exploitation. Remember the file that I created here? This is the document here, attacker exploitation. And I set here, and if you see here, I put in set as a default. What happened in this case? I had this permission, only one single action. But after that, I can escalate privilege and I can have not only the one account, remember? So I have one single account. So now I have a, an access to organization level. <laughs> I like the expression. Oh, man. Yeah, that's it. You know, this, the point here is the misconfiguration in this case. But it's not mis it's misconfiguration, but the, you know, the security guy should look in from each action inside of the AM server. But it's too much, Philip. I know. In AWS, you have more than 6,000 permissions. It's a good challenge, but you know, that's the key. So here, the attacker can escalate privilege just because you set in the end, set as a default. So after that, you can list, you can do many things, just a simple example how it works. Okay, how I can see, how I can, uh, you know, not only investigate this, but how I can mitigate this. Or if, I'm a, if I work with a software offensive side, for example, how I, can, how I can explore this. So this is one of the tools that I would like to share with you, is an open source tool called um, Cartography, basically. Uh, if you see here, this is the graph, okay? They use a Neo4j. It's very known when you talk about the graphs. Uh, the grass mode. You have here, for example, this in, in blue color, we have a policy. You have a, here the principle and or even a statement in, in this case. And here you can see the AWS groups and here you can see the users. So basically this, this uh, Cypher query, you can match the AWS principle. It's a kind of high value target that the tool use. They will set or call actually the policy. They will you know, search for inside of the policy statement, remember the statement, and they will try to find where create policy. Create policy is another action. Create policy version is one action, and create policy version is another action. But if you set the flag, set as a default, you can, again, do the same attack. That's the key, because you set as a default. The only point here to not, uh, give the success in this case, and if you have more than five policies in this custom policy, because AWS just allow five default policies, okay? Then that's the key. And after that, we will return this information in the graph mode. In other hands, we have another tool called AWS PX. And I like this picture because you can see how complex it is to work with cloud. Because if you see here, how many actions you have here, I have here, by the way, I think the here I have AWS PX. So we can set from any place, for example, you can set here the effective admin. It's a kind of high value target they use here. It's very similar when you think about who knows uh, um, Bloodhound here in this room. Okay, it's very similar the graph mode, how you can use and how you can set, how you can see some attacks basically. So if you see here, so we have some users. Those users here, 
work with cybersecurity, let's suppose, I think. No, not suppose because this guy, this guy here, our C-level <laughs> in this room. And uh, they have administrator access. This is the standard policy, you know, from AWS, by the way. I didn't, I, I don't do nothing here in this case. It's just administrator access standard from the AWS. And uh, here I create another permission, Thor Lab. And I create another group level here, the user default that we have here, Ted, James, and Bill, just names, okay? And if you see here, this is the path, and take a look at this one here. I would like to see, for example, like a Thor here, the name Thor. So in body actions, so you can see here, where's the Thor here? It's, no, no Thor, I like this one, Anna. Oh, Jesus. Where are you, Anna? By the way, Anna is the name of my wife. She will kill me because I'm using her name. <laughs> oh yeah, on top. Yeah, take a look at this one here. So let's see these actions. Let's see the impact that she has, my wife. <laughs> Definitely she will kill me. Okay, take a look at this lady. So we have here create login. Oh, we have a change password here. Why she needs to have this action? But Philippe is default for it for administrator access. That's the key, you know. This is, is the impact. So we have this one. And this is the explanation using the tool, you know. A grants permission for AM user to change their own password. So imagine if this this AWS key or secret was exposed, the attacker can change the password and the user is is done, is gone, basically. Okay, um, nice. So how we can help in the community? How Sian Segura, my company again, can help the, the, the community? Here, I would like to share with you some community product, okay? That you can see in the graph modes, it's the same case, okay? And how you can use in this, it's totally free charge, it's community version. I will do a demo here, if the lords of demo help me. But I will try with this internet connection problem. Let's see what happened, but I will try. But I have here the, the demo as well recorded, okay? Basically, let me go to the demo. So you can access here, after you do the, res the registration in this uh, web page, you have here the access. The Cloud Entitlements is a community here. It's just free. You can integrate with three different uh, you know, cloud providers. Again, um, you just... The mainly when you connect to here, you can see some recommendations about the you know the identities, how you can manage it, for example, how you can change in the administrator access, how you can change the MFA, some recommendation based on those actions. Okay. So we talk about the graphs. So I develop in this tool the attack path mode here. So I just show the example. So here this user can have this attack, attack path based on the attach policy. This is another action. So if you have this action enabled for each or whatever user that you have in your organization, this user, it's possible to attach another policy. So if they have some, you know, no high access, no sensitive, you know, permissions in the cloud, but if they have some attached policy, they can attach another policy or rule. Here is the, basically, if you see here, the description of the, how they, we can use it. This is the requirements that you need to have, and this is the impact. Privilege escalation, credential compromised, and operational interference. Basically, you can see here. And you can use in this again, it's totally free, community, and um, we, we are developing this tool, and not only this, but basically the people are using, if you see here, sandbox mode, you see here in the, in the orange color, so you don't need to integrate anything, okay, you just, when you receive the access, you have many data populate there. It's a fake data, of course. But if you'd like to use in your lab, your, your environment, whatever you want, you just disable that flag here and you can integrate your environment like this one here. I have my own lab. Let's see our, my lady, my wife, in this case, internet problem. And uh, you can see here, you can do the integration. But just, again, the idea here is to you know, spread the message about the identity security and how you can using this product. It's again, it's totally community. And one of the things that we create in this for 
the improvement for the future is to work with AI, Gen AI here. In this case, if you see, so we should enable for many users to change these actions about the MFA. So we have here this degree intelligence, you just click here and they use suggesting the code. As you can, you know, see you can using so how I can change this action in my environment. Just the you generating cloud formation or Terraform, for example. And after that you just copy this content, create the file, and that's it. Okay. It's not enabled now, but the feature of this project is to have this apply remediation. It's a kind of automation process, okay? So we have here seven uh, fix, and if you apply remediation, they will start to connect to in the cloud and works, and they will remediation this environment, okay? So you can see for the attacker perspective, if you work with the offensive security, you can use it. You know how many users you have in your environment with these policies. You can see how you can explore those guys. And if you work with defensive side, you can see this big, big picture. You can watch in this. Again, it's free and how you can help in the community because we receive a lot of things from the community, basically. Okay, I record if I have some problem, but it's not necessary. And I finish here the presentation. Uh, I think 10 minutes before. So I don't know if someone have a questions. No difficult questions. No difficult questions, sir. Go ahead. So there are one question. No difficult questions, sir. Please. You know it's difficult. <laughs> the mic doesn't work. Yeah, one second. Yeah, the question is about the attack path. Is is related to the AM? How it is connected? About that, right? Yes. The attack path basically is the how the attacker can see uh, who is you know vulnerable to um, attack the environment. So, for example, if you gain the access in the environment. Uh, we have two, two visions here. We have, for example, the defensive side and the offensive side. So the attack path is totally related to the actions. Because to give you this in graph mode, I need to have the, you know, the identities. I need to have the user. But for each user, when I do the rediscovery, we need to see how many each user has each action. For example, the attach policy, they need to have three actions mainly. Okay, the attach rule, attach, attach group, and attach user. So we have, in this moment, this project has, for example, uh, four attack, attack module. But I will create more attack module, for example. So there are any specifically uh, actions for the bug test tree, for example. Like I put the object inside of the bug test tree. So I can create an attack specifically, focus on bug test tree, another service, that the user need to have. For example, a bunch of actions, but specifically this action, put object in bug test tree. So when I do the discovery, when we find, for example, 10 users, I saw, okay, I see these 10 users can suffer in this attack path because this attack module actually. So the graph mode is just to facilitate the vision, you know, but the characteristic here is how the action is connected to the, the identities, you know? I answered, yeah? I think we have a more, one more question here. Or oh, there. Thank you. Uh, so I I, um, I love this talk, and I love how uh, you talked about AWS, GCP, um, Azure. Um, I think those other two cloud platforms don't get a lot of love when we talk about cloud security. Um, to that point, and this is a little bit of moving the goalposts, but I, I kind of wanted to hear your thoughts on this. Um, there are even more cloud environments that we kind of have to worry about when it comes to permissions. I'll give you an example, Cloudflare. Mm -hmm. I consider that a cloud environment, and that's something I actively worry about access. Um, one I would ask, what are the tools that you would point me to to start doing this kind of analysis in those kinds of environments? 
And uh, two, how would you kind of um, hypothetically, even if there isn't a tool, um, where would you start? Uh, good question. I, I thank you for asking. Actually, uh, when you talk about that, you mentioned it more than cloud providers. You mentioned it other platforms. And I have a, one of my challenge here in this identity threat labs is to <clears throat> understand how the attacker are using, for example, GitHub Actions or GitHub or GitLab. So you can see, think with me, imagine for, imagine for the defensive perspective. So if you, I can just run a discovery in my environment and I can see the whole path comes to you know GitHub and after that they go the access based on CI/CD the GitHub actions, based on this integration they are inside of the Kubernetes. These Kubernetes are inside of the AWS because of the permission in the AWS you can map the whole things. That's the idea for the future of this specific project that I'm working. There are another open source project called uh, Starbase from Juniper if I remember correctly. Uh, this specific project, the, this project is not um, focused on security, but they are a data source, res data resource actually. So you can integrate with many uh, providers, like not only cloud, but for example, sometimes as a kind of, you know, a secure solution like, you know, Tremicro or CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike is not so good, mention it. Okay, anyway, uh, that's the point. So when you have the big picture, that's the good, you know, delivery for the, the companies. That's the, the idea. I have some research. Uh, I, I, I did some research focus on Okta because it's identity provider. So how they connect with the AWS and other service. Uh, in, the, in my previous company, I created another attack module. When the attacker, when do you integrate, for example, the uh, Active Directory with Azure, not Azure ID, but Enter ID. I don't know if Microsoft changed the name again. But anyway, uh, you know, when you integrate this Active Directory with Enter ID, so you need to install the agent. This agent will be responsible for integrating the Enter ID. And the point is, this user needs to have the, the domain controller permissions from the, the, active, the active director, and they create a Microsoft online services inside of the, 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 the domain controller. And this account will be responsible for connect with Enter ID. So when, and this services is Enter ID is the high, uh, the high level uh, permissions. I don't remember the name of the high level permission now. But the not the owner, but whatever. It's the high permission. So if you gain the access inside of Enter ID here, you can escalate privilege from the Enter ID. Just if you discover it, the Microsoft online account, because they use when you install, you don't usually the administrator didn't change. They no, he, he doesn't change the the standard name of the integration. They use a Microsoft online fucking name or whatever. They don't change it because it's, it's, it's the standard, you know? And if you discover, if you go inside of the Active Directory and you discover how many Microsoft Online you have, you can see how many connect accounts in this specific domain controller you have connected with Enter ID. So you can escalate privilege. Of course, you need to, you know, escalate privilege, privilege, you need to broke this user. It's quite, it's not too simple to gain the access, but you can see the way, you know, like this is or whatever other attack. But that's a super nice, we have a many, things to research when you talk this topic. Thank you. More questions? I think no, because I'll of the <laughs> No more questions, okay, thank you, Philippe. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Have a nice day for everyone.